Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and in today's episode we are going to be having an amazing time checking out the Sky for Sim application which I think is an absolute must have for the Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Okay guys, so let's get right into it because there's a ton of information that we have to go over today in order for me to explain to you guys why I believe that Sky for Sim is probably the best um, in-game application to, to have available to you. It is the Microsoft Flight Simulator kneeboard of the future, if you will. Um, I can see that it's getting dark out here, so give me just a second. Let's change that time frame here. Yoink, there we go. Nice and pretty day. Let's turn live weather on. We're going to need that for later on. Okay, so there are two things about it right off the bat that I want you guys to be aware of it that I am not crazy about. Number one, it cannot be used at the time of making this video. You cannot use it on a mobile device. It can only be launched locally on the server um, or where the application is being hosted, which unfortunately is going to be the same location as Microsoft Flight Simulator. However, um, it can be launched from a web browser locally again on the same machine. So if you have multiple displays as I do, this can still be an extremely awesome tool to have. Um, I have reached out to the developer to find out if um, mobile use is on the roadmap for this application. And I'm really hoping the answer to that is a yes, because at that point, this application is going to be a completely new game changer. It's going to change everything that we do with Microsoft Flight Simulator. I guarantee it. Um, all right. That is the first thing. The second thing that I don't like is anytime that you are using a keyboard interaction in the, in the application, if you're using it as we are here from the simulator, you guys can see this Microsoft flight simulators, little toolbar there. Um, anytime that you try to use the keyboard com or to type into this application, obviously if those keys that you strike are bound to something in the simulator, they are triggered. So it does not remove keyboard functionality from inputting into the simulator using uh, keyboard commands as well. Meaning like, you know, setting parking brakes, things like that, uh, that you might do inadvertently while typing. However, that is resolved by again, using a web browser instead of the in game application. Now, so what essentially is this doing? You have a third party installer, you install the application, the application is launched uh, externally from Microsoft Flight Simulator. It then launches a web server essentially and creates a web access point. And that's what this is doing um, in the simulator. It's accessing a web page essentially that's being ran by your computer and not outside of your network. That's why it can't be used mobily. However, um, the web, uh, the website usage is very, very awesome. So for, let's get into first how to get it from the sim. So if you're in the side of the simulator, you come up to your toolbar, this is what it's going to look like. Again, the installer automatically puts it into your community folder as long as you uh, navigate the installer to it. We launch it, boom, here's what it looks like. You get this nice dashboard, a bulletin board if you will, gives you updates, cool things to check out, whatnot, uh, and tells you a little bit about the work they're doing and where to find more information. Um, the other thing that I really like about this is if you hit V or Victor on your keyboard, you can quickly turn the tablet on and off. Now, if you close it you like this, the V key will not work. You have to come back up to the toolbar and open it. So anytime that you want to have a quick access to it, you want to make sure that you use your V key. Now, something I did want to show you is I, I, I have it hidden. Um, so I close the window and I hit V again, right? If I go to launch this, you guys can see that nothing happened. That's because it recognized that I did try to hide it. So hit your V key again. If it's ever not popping up for you, hit your V key. Uh, it's probably hidden. Okay. So the next thing that I really, really appreciate they did with this is it is fully scalable. So you take that image, you shrink it down, boom. It adjusts whatever is inside of it to the size of it. So you don't have to have a second monitor and things like that. And that's why that V key works really well. And before anybody says anything, yes, it absolutely works in VR. 
So now they've talked about VR improvements. Obviously, it's not going to be as optimized for VR as it is for the monitors. But you, as you can see here, they're working on it. And that's that's all I ever ask. So um, those are pretty much the only cons that I have found with this application thus far. Um, so now let's get into the fun part, which is the stuff that I really want to show you guys. So we're going to be doing this from the web browser today because I found it to be easier and you're going to get a larger display for, for your viewing here. So we're going to open up the browser here. Oh, did I close it? Oh, no, I minimized it. There we go. Boom. And here's what it looks like. Now, before anyone freaks out, this is not an IP address. I, I, get, I always get someone commenting every time I show my IP addresses. Guys, on a local IP address, you're not going to find me. There's probably a thousand computers, if not millions of computers, that have the same IP address as mine. It's public IP that you want to hide. Um, anyway, this is a local IP address. You can type this up. Anybody can launch this from their computer, and 127.0.01 is a local address. It's simply telling the web browser, I want you to look for something on my computer. I don't want you going to the internet, and this is the port I want you to find it on. Okay, so we type that in with the application running, and here's what we get. You can see we're connected in the simulator. We zoom on in. Right away, you can see this camera here. This is indicating a point of interest. It says airport graveyard, should be aircraft graveyard, but that's totally fine. Um, it's the Davis Moth and Storage Yard, okay? Uh, AMARC, it's the, uh, I think it's either first or second largest in the world um, for aircraft storage facility. We can zoom on into it. And you can see here's all of those aircraft that we were just talking about. These are all airplanes, they're really there. Um, so. The other thing that you'll be do, asked to doing uh, to do, excuse me, this other thing you will be doing and asked to do during the installation process is you will be asked to create a Bing Maps key. Now, don't let that uh, frighten you. If, if you're not computer savvy, you don't have to be. Simply go to Google and say, how do I create a Bing Maps key? And honestly, Microsoft actually did a great job with that. Their, their walkthrough process is very simple. Uh, you do have to have an account with Microsoft Chances are, if you're running a Windows machine, you probably already do. Um, and if not, um, you know, you're, you're going to want to create one in order to create it. But again, if you're running a Windows machine, you very likely already have a Microsoft account. Okay, so once you do that, it'll ask you for that API key, um, and then you'll be able to access the Bing Maps from it. And the cool thing about using Bing Maps and the fact that it uses Bing Maps is so does Microsoft Flight Simulator. So the images that you see here on this map are going to be the same images that you should see in the simulator. So let's get down into it now. Here is our aircraft, okay, the uh, blue triangle, and you have all your different satellite layers or imaging layers. So we have street names, uh, your black and white view, and then obviously back to this one. Actually, I think I kind of like that. I didn't even realize that. This, that would actually be really handy for like NeoFly. Oh, cool. Neat. Um, and then let's see here if we zoom out all right let's go to our filter button here there's our filter options turn airports on hard runways uh, weather stations nav lights VOR NDBs boom and you guys get literally everything here there's the uh, VOR for uh, Tucson International uh, that's the ILS uh, guidance um, and then if we scroll out okay you can see the interstate 10 there indicators there's the Ryan VOR, a few other airports now starting to pop up here. And then if we come back out here, we can start turning some things off when it gets too cluttered. Oh, dang it, that was not, no, 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 I'm not ready to show you guys any of that yet. Let me go back to that. I have noticed this closes very easily, and that may just be on the browser portion. But if we turn airports off, let's turn a lot of this stuff off. We have tons of that. points of interest within 200 miles. That's pretty awesome. Nav aids, airport range, you can set the same thing. Uh, let's start turning some of this stuff off though. ILS we do want hard runways and eh, not for today's flight and then airports. Boom. There's all of our airports. Now for right now we'll leave those on, but we'll be turning those off later. Okay. Um, let's actually remove the street name view for now so I can start getting into some of the cooler stuff. I don't want to spend too much time on the map. I do recommend that you guys read the documentation very, very thoroughly. Um, there, It's not a lot, ton of documentation to go through, but it's very quick, very to the point, and walks you through a couple of tips, especially with the flight planning, which we're gonna get into next. So next we're gonna hit our menu button here. Obviously this back arrow will cycle back to the previous page. Now it literally remembers where you were each time, so it's kind of cool. But let's come up here. Take a look at airports. Now, airports, we can come up here, type in any ICAO. Now, remember what I was saying earlier about the keyboard. If you are using the in-game app, 
Okay, so if you're using, yeah, where are you? Oh, let me minimize my browser. I want to show it. I just want to make sure I'm staying thorough here. If you're using this one, then when you get to this screen, make sure you use this keyboard. However, since we're using the browser, um, I can use my keyboard. So I'm going to type in here, and let's just do uh, K-R-Y-N. Let's do Ryan Field. Come down here. You do still have to hit that Enter button. And boom, we have all that information for Ryan. Uh, now let me see if I can scale this back a little bit here. What did that show us at? Whoa, 50%, huh? Wow, that's just huge. All right, but we can scroll down. You get a satellite image of the map, which I think is freaking cool. Um, I can't tell you how many times that I've gotten lost, especially when Neofly uh, trying to find something, and I had no idea what I was looking for because I've never seen it before. So having this is fantastic. It makes it so much easier to find a specific airport, especially some of those real tiny dirt runway kind of things where you know you wouldn't expect a runway to be. So general information, I'm going to sort of zip through this, guys, but you guys can sort of Feel free to pause. I'm going to make sure I get enough imagery on each screen where if you want to pause, by all means. But you get all kinds of information in regard to each of these airports. It tells you everything you need to know about them. Um, and it is just broken down and extremely thorough. Um, our comms information, ILS information if you need it. Um, and then the MEDAR information for that particular location. Um, just <laughs> really freaking cool stuff. Really cool stuff. I'm really thrilled about this stuff. Okay. So now let's go ahead and come back. I also want to show you another way to get to that. Let's say we want to do the same thing here at Davis Monthan Air Force Base. We click on that. Boom. There you go. All right. Same information. We can come over here. There's ILS. There's weather. All right. Let's click on the weather. There we go. Um, really, really awesome. I mean, this is fantastic for planning where you want to go, expecting your arrivals and approaches and things like that. I mean, just well, I, I love it. I'm blown away. And again, even if you don't, if you, if, since we can't use this on a mobile device, we can absolutely do, um, you know, putting it on a separate monitor or things like that. This is going to be really handy. Okay. Whew. God, talking a lot. I, I'm trying to talk fast, guys. I, I hope I'm not upsetting anybody. I, I, there's just, there's a lot for me to go through still. Okay. And then from the map here, obviously, you know, if we're out poking around, zooming around, you can click that button there and it will lock the uh, map back down centered onto your aircraft even if I come over here so what the zoom does is it follows the pointer so if I come over here it still pulls me right back to the airplane so really really fancy uh, navigation there if you ask me um, I'm really stoked about the way that this is operating so far all right let's go back to our menu button here so we've talked about airports you guys have obviously seen the weather but same thing as before now weather's going to give you the nearest information what weather will not do um, from that tab is you can't type in ICAO. If you're looking for a specific location, trying to get the weather information from there, make sure you come back here to airports, then go to the weather tab and you can grab that. Okay, now let's talk about the one that I've really been wanting to share with you guys. I, this is the one I've been trying to get to, and that is the flight plan. So we're going to come in here and we're going to go to flight planning. And we're going to first go to create, type in our ICAO. Again, I'm using the web browser, so I can just use my keyboard. Boom, hit enter set it as my departure right now we're not going to set the arrival yet and i'm going to show you why so we're going to go back to the map from this point and you can see now this blue flag has been labeled as uh, as a, a, a nav point this is our departure point obviously as you guys saw me enter in there now here's where this gets super cool especially for vfr flight planning if you are planning a vfr flight one of the hardest things to do in my personal opinion with microsoft flight simulator as of right now and i know that they've made it a little bit better adding that satellite imagery to the world map but doing a vfr flight plan in the world map is still in my opinion pretty frustrating it really is and i'm not knocking microsoft for that i'm really not that's a tough thing to throw in here and that's where you know we have these amazing developers of applications like this to sort of pick up that weight which is super nice um but you know vfr flight planning especially if you're in an area you don't know can be really tricky because you got to be able to very quickly see the whole areas so that we can sort of look for landmarks that you're going to be able to recognize from the sky all right, so let's say that we are coming out of Tucson International. Uh, one of the first things that obviously we're going to, you know, I know Tucson very well. So um, let's turn airports back on. I think that would be a good way. Oh, airports are on. Oh, damn. All right. Well, then oh, here, let's do that. Uh, let's turn the VORs and NDBs on, too. Okay. 
So let's see, which direction do we want to go? Well, I'll tell you what, let's start out with Ryan Field. That's actually not a bad thing. So we'll use Ryan as our first waypoint. We want to fly out of Tucson. We're just doing some VFR, chilling, doing some sightseeing. We want Ryan to be our first airfield. Well, now we can mouse over it here and we can sort of get our information cool. Um, and then if we want, we can go to Google and get the longitude and latitude coordinates of Ryan Field. Or we can just come over here and double click. And boom, we just created the first leg of our flight plan gives us our heading gives us the distance wow 10 nautical miles nailed that one didn't i um so boom created that and i'm gonna show you guys something that's so cool here when we're done with this trust me stick with me um and then from here where do we want to go from ryan uh let's come up north a little bit maybe we'll just do a little circuit mm, i think that's morana maybe we just want to go airport hopping there's morana regional right there so let's go boom all right, and then, well, actually, you know what? Let's make this over here. That way we fly between the mountains. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Tell me that's not cool. Tell me you guys don't think that's freaking awesome already. All right, now let's go, um, let's just go, well, right here. Well, that's kind of dumb, right? We, we don't need a, a waypoint for that. So let's just get rid of that one left click simple left click boom left click and hold and i can move it right it's just this is so nice just wait i'm telling you we're still not done yet this is probably the coolest part about this whole thing is the flight planning uh let's see here so we've already touched on that what are we at here we're at 16 miles 19 miles so whopping 35 miles there uh, da -da 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 -da. what do we got up here actually these black rocks are actually really cool to go out and fly over um, I've actually seen them from the air before. It's kind of cool. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to find something around here. All right. Well, you guys get the gist here. So let's just, I guess, pick somewhere. Um, so we're coming back down from Marana. Well, let's go up north. And from Marana, let's see. That's going to be Picacho Peak. I'm trying to find somewhere different, somewhere that we haven't been before. Well, let's see here. KCGZ. All right, fine. Let's go here. Boom. And then let's see where you want to go from here. I have no idea what that KIWA is. I've never been there before. So let's go here. Boom. And for example, KIWA, I have no idea what this airport is. Let's go find out what it is. We can go to airports over here. KIWA, press enter. Okay, go to our general information name. Oh, no. Hang on. I don't think I did that. Enter. There we go. Now we got it. General, it's Williams Gateway. There you go. There's all of our information. I've never been to Williams Gateway, so we're going to fly to Williams Gateway. Let's go back to the map. Oh, look, there's my flight plan. I can just continue on where I left. So let's fly past. Or, you know what? Let's just land at it. Let's just do that. So let's just do. We're going to set KIWA as our destination. So now we're going to go back over here and we're going to go back into our flight plan page. And this is going to sound a little crazy, but we're going to hit the create button again. And I'm going to type that K-I-W-A. I'm going to press enter, and I'm going to hit set as arrival. And there it is, folks. There it is. And look at this. Well, now you got to figure out how high do you want to fly. Well, we know that according to um, our map here, our highest elevation point here is uh, just shy of 2,700 feet. So as long as we stay above 2,700 feet, we should be out of harm's way throughout the entire flight. And it even shows what the elevation is doing as we continue to fly. So as we reach our destination, we should be, you know, down to about, what was that, 1,500 feet, 1,400 feet. You got all your legs. As you cross one out, boom, look at this, moves everything over. It shows you where you're at in the leg. Okay, so as, as you hit each waypoint, we're going to cross that off, cross that off, cross that off. It starts knocking them out, letting you know where you're at, what your next target is. You can use your stopwatch up here if you wish, if you want to track your leg time. If you are extremely smarter than me and a much better pilot than me, uh, chances are you can you know how to plot, all right, I'm going to be flying at this fast, at this altitude, burning this much fuel an hour. I should be at this speed. I know that I need to be, I should be on waypoint two after eight and a half minutes. You can use your stopwatch and see where you're actually at. Right. I mean, and then here you can set your target speed. So we're doing a Mooney. So we're probably going to be wanting a cruising speed of about 130 knots. Boom. Everything's been adjusted now. I mean, it's just 
this thing is so cool. Now, this is another one that I haven't figured out how to make work. So let's go to our save flight plan. And let's say we wanted to make this as test one. Or just go test. Press enter. Oh, looks like it's going to work this time. Hit save. Bam! There it is. All right, cool. So I must have been doing something silly when I was playing with it earlier because I couldn't make it work. I, I, I would love to know what I was doing, but I was doing something weird apparently. But uh, let's see here. What does this guy do? That's a search field. Not search button. We can delete said flight plan if we want. Boom. Gets rid of it. Gone, right? I mean, guys, come on. What more do I need to say at this point? This application is totally freaking cool. And look at that. Got everything we need. We can zoom out. If we want to have a nice, clean screenshot of our flight plan, right? That's when we can come back to our filters. Oh, we want that on, but start turning crap off. Maybe that's bugging us. That's perfectly fine, though. So if you want to have just this screen up somewhere, all right? Your aircraft's going to be on a moving map, so you can track, the, track your position the entire time through. Zooming in right down to it. I mean, that's, that's some really good zoom right there. Um, let's go back to our menus. Let's move on here. Now, documents. This is another really cool one. So let's we're going to try something here. So let's say we wanted a document here. I'm going to open up. Oh, let's open up another page here. And what I'm going to do. Oh, what happened there? Oh, hold on. All right. Let's just look for uh, KTUS charts. KTUS uh, chart. Airport diagram. Okay. Um, all right. Why did you stop there? Okay. So I'm going to try something here. We're going to copy this link. Okay. And we're going to come back here. HTTP link. And we're going to hit paste. And let's type this as KT. Oh, my bad. There we go. KTUS diagram. And let's hit enter. And let's hit download. Let's see if that grabs that. I'm not sure if that's going to work or not. Doesn't look like it. Oh, that's why. We have to download. All right, here, let's do this. Hold on. Copy link address. That's why. Look at that. <laughs> okay, so for those of you who have never seen this before, anytime you see a hyperlink, you can right click. That's what this blue, these, all these blue links are. Anytime you can click on something like this on a web page and it directs you to another web page, that's a hyperlink. So any of these, okay, Tucson Airport photos, if we wanted, we could download. Um, but anyway, so I took this diagram here, and you can just right click and copy link address, and that's what I pasted down in here. Now you got to name it first, and so now check this out. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's go here. Oh, there we go. There it goes. And boom. How about that? Now, I want you guys to think about all the different things that we can do here. And I want to show you something else here real quick while I'm thinking about it. Give me just a minute here. I got to get to the directory. I should have had it up already, but I don't. I have been, like, so excited about this application. I mean, guys, it does freaking everything. I mean, there's just so many awesome. And it's it's cheap. I mean, this is less than 20 U.S. dollars. All right, it took me a second, but you guys can see the directory here. Let me expand this for you. I think I can make this a little bit larger for you. So there you go. Okay, and let me pull it back on my screen now. There we go. Okay, so here is the document that we just downloaded. You can see it's a PNG. Now, PNGs, guys, are really, really simple. So we're going to do a little test here. So uh, give me just a second here. I'm going to turn that off again for just a minute. And let me think about something cool. Oh, you know what? I know what I'll use. I'm going to go to my Navigraph charts. This is just as an example. Uh, let's see if Navigraph is actually going to behave today on the... Oh, it is. Oh, nice. That's once in a row. Okay. So I need to zoom this down like a lot. All right. So once again, let's say I had... Sure. Princess Juliana. There we go. Let's say we wanted to go here. Oh, click on the book. And we're going to go taxi. And we want that airport taxi information. Right. And I'm going to show you guys something that's really cool here. Here's what I'm really going to like about this. So, one of the tools that I love to use is called GreenShot. G-R-E-E-N Shot. All one word. It's a screen capture. It, it helps you take screenshots. All right. Now, its default saving method is none other than, you guessed it, PNGs. 
So I take a screenshot of that chart right there that you guys see on the screen. I just took a screenshot of it using GreenShot. I did a save as, and now I'm going to drop it into that directory we were just looking at. So community, oh, nope. I must have an iPad document, and let's see here. They had created a folder. We're going to create our own here, and we're going to call this. Ooh, what am I going to call this? What was this? Uh, TNCM. There we go. And then we're going to call this particular image. Uh, I don't know, airport diagram, I guess. Again. Well, here, we'll do TNCM airport. There we go. That's a better way to do it. And this is just an example. This is an idea. I'm sorry I wasn't prepared for this. I literally just thought of this on the fly. So we drop that out. Now we're going to back up here. And let's see here. Let's turn that off. And let's bring Chrome back into the game here. Okay. So now we're going to close this. There we go. And we're going to hit refresh. Look what we got. And we're going to open that up. Bam. That is the screenshot that I just took. I want you guys to think about all the different things that you can do by being able to create your own screenshots. And we're still not done yet, but I want you guys to realize how awesome this is. All the different things that it gives you the options to do. The next thing we're going to be taking a look at is PDFs. Now, before we leave screenshots and these um, downloadable links, I want you guys to also think about things like um, checklists. Okay. Um, many checklists that you find online um, at flysim.2 are in um, PDF format, okay? So it really makes it quite awesome um, to be able to simply drop those into this directory. We can type it, in. actually here, let's do one. Let, let's just grab one right now. All right, so we're logged in here, right? Yep, I am. And let's just find a checklist. I'm gonna find any checklist. So let's go checklist, boom, here we go. And what do we got? Uh, JD, that's actually a really good toolbar too, by the way, guys. Um, let's see here. What have I, what do I need? I was thinking if they had the movie Moonies, you know what? Here, there we go. I'm going to need one for the caravan, right? I need to learn how to fly the caravan. So let's go download. All right. So we're starting the download. There it is. All right. I'm going to close this browser out. All right. So now that we have downloaded our checklist, we're going to come here, extract it. Okay. And this is what we're going to be looking for, but we don't want to actually just copy this in. So check this out. This is where we're going to want the application. This is the actual application that is running um, our server. So you can see here we have uh, PDF files to upload to the pad. So we're going to browse for that. We're just going to go to our downloads, click in here, grab that guy, hit open. And there it is. Okay. And then if we go to our viewer, there it is right there. So there it is. We open that up and boom. So now let's talk about what I wanted to check out for just a second. Let's go back to here. And actually that's all I'll need from at this point. Click that. And so what I want to do here is I want to go to back to my application folder. And it already puts it into its own folder. I didn't even catch that. How awesome is that? So it automatically seg segments it out into its own directory for you. So you don't have to worry about that. That is beautiful. That It does its own organization. I am blown away. So there's our checklist now imported directly into the game. Easily accessible. Now there are a bunch of different ways to do that already, especially with JD's checklist. But again, this is a one-stop shop utility, and I've absolutely just been in love with this thing since I started playing with it today. And then obviously you have a notepad where you can just type various notes that you made. Like this is an awesome application. Oop! There we go. Yay! Cool. So you guys caught the gist here. I mean, this thing is, like I said, it's perfect. I mean, I, I really, if they, if the developers can get it to the point where it can be used on a mobile device, this thing is going to decimate anything else that I have seen yet uh, for flight simulation as an e-board. 
Um, and then you have different sh uh, shortcuts here. So define a shortcut, open and close the Skypad. That's the V key that we talked about earlier. Uh, start and stop flight plan stopwatch if you want to, and to reset the flight plan stopwatch. Uh, visual effects if you want high contrast on the uh, toolbar buttons. Nav data update. This is something you will see when you first do the installation. PDF render quality, uh, 100 being the lowest, but it will render or load in the fastest, 300 being the most pretty, again, but takes a bit longer. I'm actually going to max that out because I want that on top. Uh, we're going to hit apply down here. Boom. Uh, API, this is that API key I was telling you guys about. Uh, that would go right in here. And then reset if you want to reset all the nav data and preferences. So I know this was a lot, guys. <sighs> this was my, my mouth is literally dry as dry as can be. But this is, and then of course, by the way, there's this help uh, button, which brings you to a help document, which walk you through everything step by step. For example, going to the flight plan, walks you through how to create all the flight plan. It also brings you down to the map. Where was it? Uh, oh, you know, I think I passed it. There's a couple uh, quick commands that you can do to very easily mark and unmark. Here we go. Here's all your different uh, quick commands. Uh, that I was showing you guys earlier. I mean, this just, it's too cool. It, it really is. It, it, it's so well done. And I can't wait to see things further on. Uh, the viewer, you know, walks you through how to create things in there. Um, I'm just, I'm super stoked. Here's the PDF documentation um, that you want to look for. And then you have the PDF tab that we just talked about. Anyway, I can go on and on. Obviously, very great documentation, very great application. It's all in one. You have access to everything that you could need, uh, whether it be an IFR flight plan or a VFR flight plan, depending on, on how d deep into it you get. Any documents, flight plans, etc., are stored in the application until you remove them. So, you know, even if on the first time, especially if you're doing IFR and you have to go to Google and you have to get all your charts and plot everything out, once you do that, um, they're there for the next time that you ever want to use them. So you can really create quite the database for it if you're really meticulous with it. Um, but uh, to the Skype for Sim developers, this is an amazing application. I was, I'm thoroughly and unbelievably grateful that I was given the opportunity to review such an amazing product. I can't wait to see how this continues to develop. I'm just, yeah. Um, I don't think I need to give you guys my uh, my final thoughts on this particular app. Um, highly, highly recommend it, even in its current state, even not being able to use it on a mobile device. I absolutely recommend this. I think it's, it's a wonderful tool to have. And again, you don't have to use it from the browser. You can use it directly from the uh, simulator um, right here. And it, it does all the same functionality. And again, having the ability to very quickly turn off. I mean, that's a very fast response very fast response so even then it's not it's not intrusive you know what i mean so anyways guys as always let me know what you think down in the comments below if you have this application let me know how you use it and what uh, some tips and tricks that you have found with it are um, and again as always above everything else stay safe and healthy i know it's getting crazy out there again so god bless you all and i will see you all in the next one